Did you know we're running a convention? That's right, the Nerd and Tie Expo is going to be held in September 23rd through 25th in Eau Claire, Wisconsin at the Plaza Hotel and Suites. It's going to be amazing. All your favorite people will be there, including us and people more famous than us, like Tiffany Grant from Evangelion and Sean Orange of Famicom Dojo. I haven't heard from him lately. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be amazing. And let's give that Eau Claire landmark a great send-off for its final convention. And it'll be fun. Pre-register now! On this Fortnite's episode of Nerd and Pie, Star Trek actor Anton Yelchin has tragically passed away at the age of 27. Paramount and CBS are finally released those uh, Star Trek fan film guidelines, and boy are they a mess. CW is pulling everything off of Hulu. Supergirl has its Superman. We talk about the new Ghostbusters theme. Wizard World has canceled the Cruise Con, and we read your mail. All this on Nerd and Tie. Hello. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nerd and Tie. The only podcast on the internet with a dress code. I am one of your hosts for the fortnight. I am Professor Fur Sturz. And with me, as always, is the contemplative Nick Azumi. And I'll form the head. And the totally unpredictable Trey Dorn. I am I am very predictable in my staring at the CPU usage on my computer. I hope none of the video glitches happen here today. I hope it holds together, oh too. Who knows? I upgraded my operating system. That was a mistake. <laughs> what are you running oh now? Let's see what is... Uh, I finally got around to upgrading to El Capitan. Oh, right on. So, how are, how, how are we doing otherwise this fortnight, guys? It's been... We're, this is like... Okay, so normally, like for those of you at home, we normally record on Sunday evening uh, at about 6.30 p.m. 7 p.m. central time for the last two episodes we have now recorded in the morning on sunday and we are now recording on a monday evening okay we were supposed to record on sunday night but what happened was is that i had been in um milwaukee on the weekend and i left milwaukee at noon okay so i like gave myself plenty of time to get to lafayette indiana where i live but there was so much construction on I-65, and there was an accident on 294, and, like, all of this stuff happened where it took me, like, seven hours to drive home in what is Jeez. normally a four-hour car drive. So I, I, I had to... Um, I, I was not technically I was technically driving, but I was not moving forward when I texted for a Nick as I was stopped. Effective, I was I think I actually meant to put the car in park at that point on I sixty five. That's happened to me before. I was I I was driving to Rhinelander once, and like there was a point where I was literally in park for about fifteen minutes. Construction in the summer is awful. Yeah. Uh, it, it might be for the better we didn't record Sunday night. I, I was doing my best Brian Wilson impression. Not the creative genius kind, but the lying in bed feeling sad kind. So, oh. you know. Uh, well, I'm glad you're not feeling... Fathering a member of Wilson Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, well, on that sad note... um. Uh, you know, guys, more often than not lately, it seems like we have to usually start the episode with some, some bad news. Um, and There's today, no one staying alive. Today is no different. Uh, of course, uh, for those of you who haven't heard by now, um, Anton Yelchin, uh, known for his roles as uh, Chekhov in the, in the Abrams vs. Star Trek films. Uh, he had a great role in uh, um, Charlie, Bar Bar Charlie Char Bartlett. Charlie Bartlett. There we go. A uh, great movie. He's an alpha dog. Great, great films. Uh, has tragically passed away in an accident at the age of 27 on June 19th, last Sunday. Um, yeah. Uh, right on Father's Day. Terrible, terrible accident happened at his home. And um, unfortunately, he did not, not survive it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's such a weird thing. It's like... 
it, his his the particular like he was pinned by his own car against a brick mailbox, and mm-hmm. it turns out that Oof. the particular model Jeep had actually been recalled because when on an incline it would roll while in park, and yeah. that's they're really Jesus. they really think that's what happened here, and it's just awful. This one really uh, messed with me bad because like. It, it's always awful when an actor you love dies. And this was like a double hit because I'm a big fan of of uh, Anton Yeltsin's work. And then uh, like and then when I, when I found out he was the same age as me, that just hit really hard. Like I I felt like it, I got sucker punched when that happened. It just it feels so wrong and awful and terrible and ugh. Yeah, like I, I don't even know what else to say because I mean, like I, like we, we talked about so many. Like I, again, he was a great in Star Trek and Charlie Bartlett, and uh, also I want to throw out the uh, the remake of Fright Night. He was phenomenal in that movie. And then he oh, was, that's right, he was in that. There's... Yeah, he was him and David Tennant fighting vampires. It's like amazing. <laughs> He's been like there's like actually like a couple other movies of his that I cannot like. Odd Thomas. Have you guys? Odd Thomas was so he was so good in Odd mm. Thomas. Mm-hmm. Of course, he was uh, also Kyle Reese in Star Trek or in a Terminator Salvation. Excuse me. You know um, that is the only Terminator film I have not seen. It was it's at, you actually know, not people, that bad. It's I, good, I enjoyed actually. it actually, and he was great as Kyle Reese in that movie. He was he did a good job, and um, and I mean, have you guys seen the Green Room yet? Mm-mm. No. Okay. Okay. It's got. Patrick Stewart in it. He's playing like, uh, he's playing the leader of a white supremacist group. Patrick Stewart is, and and Anton Yelchin is fighting them. They're a punk rock band. Wow, it's amazing. Wow. It's incredible. I hi- like probably one of the most surprising movies of the year. And and add it to the list. Yeah, it, r- looking at it right now, I just looked it up ninety percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, Jiminy. Wow. Which, which I mean, like for a film pitch, to be like, all right, so Patrick Stewart plays a white supremacist, and and Anton Yelchin is going to be a member of a punk band, and they're going to be fighting like that. That is the movie, and it's perfect. Um, and and yeah, I mean, th- uh, we we've still got a little bit of left him left to see. Um, mm-hmm. at at the. At his death, he had, I believe, four movies in post production. Well, and Star Trek Beyond's coming out in, you know, in a couple of weeks here. Yeah, not too long. I'm going to be really disappointed if uh, that film doesn't have a dedication to him at the end of it. I'm going to be really disappointed. I honestly think the only reason it wouldn't is just if they couldn't make the, like, if it had already been, like, finalized and sent out places. Yeah. I mean, like, if beyond that reasoning, I would be really disappointed because. He's so good in those movies. Yeah. I like what what I I almost like his I mean like obviously Walter Koenig is 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 always going to be Chekhov, but I think like what makes <laughs> Daniel is how like manic he is and how just all like that I mean, you know, Walter Koenig kind of did that, but no, I mean like he was just excitable and and happy and happy to be there and and that's that's what I loved about about Anton Yelchin's God. uh Chekhov. Even though his Chekhov, Chekhov. his Chekhov couldn't technically be the same person as Walter Koenig's Chekhov because they were born in different years. That's true. OG Chekhov is going to outlive young Chekhov. That's really upsetting. Yeah. That is that is not something that should happen. So that's like I not that I want Walter Koenig to die, but dear God. Like, <laughs> no, Walter Koenig, you were supposed to live forever now. That's You've your got new that. job is we can't lose another Chekhov. He was he was the he had the best line in in the in the Futurama Star Trek episode, so he's got to live forever. <laughs> Walter Walter's even got his own. Uh, Walter's even been in other movies. Yep, and I have my own friends and my own keys. <laughs> oh boy, yeah. So, okay. Our our thoughts uh, hearts go out to Antonio Elson's family. Um, yeah, tragic tragic accident. Uh, staying on Star Trek, I guess. Uh, Nick, <laughs> how, Ray? Do we, how do we? We're gonna we're gonna change gears and talk about um, what I would normally describe as a tragedy if it hadn't just followed an actual one. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, there's no good segue. So, um, one of the stories we've been following, of course, has been the lawsuit between CBS Paramount um, suing the creators of uh, Axanar, a Star Trek fan film. And this, a lot of this is... We talked about this a few episodes ago where we mistakenly... We mistakenly thought a set of proposed guidelines were an actual set put out by Paramount, and that was my fault for poorly researching a story. But and that and that happens. But honestly, they looked really good. Uh, right. They're, they're, they were like, "Hey, these 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 this will be okay if if these are the guidelines." But those oh, those were no. a set of proposals that they. Uh, but uh, even though, and that X in our lawsuit, even though J.J. Uh, Abrams claimed it was going to go away, has it's still going on. They haven't fixed that. And CBS and Paramount have now announced their guidelines for fan films. Oh, and boy. they're freaking terrible. Oh, they're the worst. They are the worst. Because it's like, okay, so fan films have been part of Star Trek since forever. I mean, I think the oldest one I've ever seen is from the 70s, but they probably... You know, it, anyways, it's they've always been a part of fandom, and they've been a part of a lot of other franchises, too. Star Wars has a massive history of fan films, but Lucasfilm, years and years and years ago, put out a set of guidelines for fan films. And while Star Trek has had a consistent stream of fan films throughout the years, be it Starship Exeter, be it, um, you know, Star Trek New Voyages, which became Phase 2, which we're all annoyed that they used that name, but who cares, um, or Star Trek Continue, starring Vic Mignogna, um, it, it, they have not, they had yet to put out an official guide, the set of guidelines, and they have now. And these are the worst set of guidelines I have ever seen. And it, it all comes. Much, and they stri- they strip away any ability to really do anything. They 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 kill fan film culture in the first point, where mm-hmm. they say productions have to be less than fifteen minutes for a single self-contained story, or no more than two segments episodes or parts not to exceed 30 minutes total with no additional seasons episodes parts sequels or remakes see it's great if you only have ideas for star trek short films uh yeah (laughs) i was about to say it's it's uh, ideal for that stop motion star trek thing i was gonna do at the creo minifigures yeah that'll take a That'll take me a whole year to make five minutes of footage with that. Oh, you wouldn't have even, <laughs> you you wouldn't have been able to use those figures, Nick, because just down the list, you cannot use anything that has uh, but Sean, their content. All of Sean Corse's fa- puppy Star Treks so would have been in violation of this. Yup. My I've God. Seen some uh, of those. What is he it? What, showed what is me it? those once. If the, uh, the content in the fan production must be original, not reproductions, recreation, recreations, or clips from any Star Trek production. That's fine. That like that part's fine. Like not using, like actual clips. It's most of these are actually fine. It's like I we expected mm-hmm. the restriction. We thought they might restrict any crowdfunding, and they've they've no, limited that, to fifty thousand. Cool. That's fine. It's I think yeah. that's actually a, a Star Wars. Um, in the Star Wars set of guidelines, but it's that, it's that, con- it's that length. It's the length. It's I can't think of a single fan film I have, any Star Trek fan film I've ever watched that isn't at least forty five minutes long. I mean, there there probably are there probably are ones, but the only ones I've sat down and like gone through, and almost everybody's trying to create a continuing story. That's but the, the point. The, the attraction. Point. Well, the attraction of like Star the pe- Wars is the coherent universe. Well, heck, like half of the appeal of Star Trek continues was the fact that they were making an ongoing series when CBS wasn't doing anything for the fans. Mm-hmm. I... <clears throat> and also it's I mean, so that's a huge issue for me. And it's it really it the the other point is if you go further down um, at number seven, because number seven makes me laugh. I was actually talking about number five. The fan production must be a real fan production, i.e. creators, actors, and all the participants must be amateurs, cannot be compensated for their services, that part is fine, but, and cannot be currently or previously employed on any Star Trek series, films, productions of DVDs, or with any of CBS or Paramount Pictures licensees. First off, besides the fact that a large number of fan films have, I mean, the reason why a large number of fan films have featured Star Trek actors is because Star Trek actors have been willing to donate their time at no compensation to engage with fans. And while it's true, Axanar is... why they're awesome. 
And while it's true, I mean, this is an attack against Axanar because it is full of a lot of the actors doing the same things. It's it's interesting that Renegades hasn't been targeted, but I think it's because because Renegades is almost exclusively Re- actors. Renegades Renegades is actually um, taking out a lot of stuff that connects it to Star Trek. This is a recent story, actually. Um, Renegade fan series removes Star Trek elements in wake of new guidelines is what is what I've been reading. Yeah, it's. Here. So they're pulling a lot out of it. Right, but it's still... I don't know. It's Renegades, like... But, like, I've got... I've, they're, um, Tim Russ has done a handful of these. Like, Nichelle Nichols has appeared in fan films. Um, like, it's... There's so much stuff. And it's... But also, that means that, say, uh, James Doohan's son appears in some of the Star Trek movies in a minor role. Chris Doohan appears in the Star Trek films, which means even though he has also appeared in fan films, it means he can never do another fan film. There are, if you look at the 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 extras in Star Trek the Motion Picture, are almost entirely composed of members of the Star Trek uh, Star Trek fan club and early massive members of fandom. The ones still alive because some have passed away but the ones still alive then could never appear in a fan film because they were at one time employed in a star trek this is film. just uh, it's this is appalling and gross honestly i, I it's, it's this it's is, unfair to fans and it's an attack on us this is an attack Number, on the largest fan base because paramount and cbs are being overreactionary towards axinar and if you want it, like, it's, I think the fundraising restrictions alone stop a production like Axanar from happening again because it relies on literally, like, a million dollars in fundraising. If, mm-hmm. So, if you just restrict the fundraising, like, you'll notice that, honest to God, why didn't they just copy Lucasfilm's rules? It would have been smart. Would have been the right thing to do. Yeah, instead they've created this awful set of rules which are attacking their most dedicated diehard fans. This is ridiculous. Honestly... How, how many good fan films are we going to get that are going to be under 15 minutes, do you think? Well, well even uh, like uh, this whole... The the thing about like the props, uh, the props and such, um, I actually even feel bad for the... Uh, going back to Vic Mignogna's thing, Star Trek Continues... I heard him interviewed on NPR back when Into Darkness came out and they were talking about how that crew have like this uh, bunch of storage units and in them are just replicas of Star Trek sets. What are they going to do with all of those sets now? Are those, I mean, like <laughs> they can't continue their series, not under these rules. So do they just have a bunch of Star Trek sets now? What, what happens? Yeah. This is, so fans, it's time to start writing letters. Yeah, no kidding. You know how we got Enterprise renewed for another season and we got the original series renewed for another season with Letter Campaign? Let's renew our fan films. Let's renew our fan films. I think We don't have a choice. We have to. We need to start a letter writing campaign to Paramount and CBS, the because CBS legally owns the the properties, but Paramount owns the film rights because of the stupid Viacom split. <sighs> but write we, letters we, to we need to Send write emails. letters to the owners of the Star Trek franchise and tell them that we as fans want our right to make fan films. We don't. We we obvious obviously we don't want to violate the the commercial. Like none of these should be commercial. It's all we want is to be able to enjoy and play with the shared experience that we have. And the fact is, is that the vast majority of Star Trek fan films have been made for the love of it by people who care passionately. I mean, I don't think Vic Mignogna is exactly making any money off of Star Trek Continues. But he genuinely loves Star Trek, which we have to give him credit for. He loves it. Give yeah. him full credit for that, because, yeah, it, that's, but I mean, really, that's all of everyone who works on these fan films. It's done out of a pure love for this TV show, and it's unfair to cr- just take a big crap in our cereal just because they're afraid of, 
just because they're afraid of things moving forward. Really, they're afraid of reality. <sighs> Not a great move, Star Trek. Not a great move. Yeah. This is... This is bullshit. Yep. Of the highest degree. Send angry emails. Well, not, not angry. No, send, don't send, send well thought out emails. emails. Write send letters. Send well thought out. I'm talking mm-hmm. about paper and put it a stamp on it, put it in the mail. We have to do this old school because there is something important and impactful from a f- pile of physical objects being delivered. You can't really just delete it. You actually have to make an effort if you're going to get rid of written down things. And also, frankly, email doesn't make as much of an impact because you can hit a button and make it go away. Mail, even if you don't open it, makes an impact. Because it also says they were willing to pay for the postage to get it to the person who they want to hear this, you know. It's not just something they typed up and threw out onto the internet. This was, this is the time, guys. Go to your word processor, write something, you know, thoughtful, print it out, sign your name. Calligraphy. Put a stamp on it. Star Trek fandom needs this. Yeah, because it's the, you know, the, the fan films are like one of the things that have helped hold fandom together but let's we get we go back to fan films uh, fan films and i talked about this last time we talked about fan films but star wreck the <laughs> that fan film created a studio that went on to create independent products like and it wasn't that they made money off of their fan films but that they learned the tech the movie making techniques that they then went on to do you know it's fan films are like fan fiction because there are many. It's a great way to start writing and learn how to hone your craft before you tackle something on your own. And actually, there's no shame in sticking with the fan fiction. It's it's all about playing and exploring the space in these shared creative worlds, and that needs to be encouraged, not discouraged. It's just ridiculous. Ooh. And these are the most loyal customers of the brand. Like mm-hmm. that's the thing is that the people you're 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 punishing are your most loyal customers, and no business has ever won by doing that. And I, you know, it's it's, it's hard to be a Star Trek fan these days too. And frankly. when you're well, and when you're already making us jump through ridiculous hoops, like sign up to a subscription only service that nobody wants to watch mm-hmm. the new series, because let me tell you, nobody wants CBS All Access. Nobody wants it. I don't know. We don't want it. I don't know anybody especially, who subscribes. Especially to now, it. especially now that the only real show that I would have watched on CBS All Access, aside from Star Trek, is not on CBS anymore. Right. But it's, CBS All Access is is amazing to me because, and I'm going to tell you why. The only P, CBS is like getting rid of any programming that attracts younger viewers, right? Mm-hmm. So but... they're they're they're. they're they're trying to attract people to an online service to stream CBS shows, but the only people watching the CBS shows they have are the people least likely to subscribe to an online service. Like... Oh, boy. This talk of online services reminds me of another depressing thing in our next story, actually. Yeah. Right? Well... Yeah. Hey, speaking of online subscription services... So, um, uh, we had an interesting bit of news, um, about where the CW is going to be putting their shows for streaming. Now, CW has been in the middle of several negotiations recently. Um, uh, some people have been quite excited because on one end, uh, we've had, uh, CW cut a deal with Netflix. So, uh, Netflix will be getting the full seasons of shows on faster after the season is over. Yeah, only Yay! two weeks after instead of two days before the next season premieres. Which is cool. I can deal with that. That That's was actually, because, yeah, that was a big problem for me when I was trying to, uh, because I didn't start watching Arrow until a few seasons in. And mm-hmm. I watched, like, had to cram in a whole season of Arrow in like four days or something like before the episodes expired off of Hulu Mm -hmm. for the new season. 
Well, uh, you're not going to have that problem anymore, Trey, but you're going to have a bigger problem, kind oh, of. Oh, no. Um, so, uh, meanwhile, Hulu tried to get, uh, Hulu, uh, was, uh, renegotiating their contract with the CW, um, hoping to come up with a deal where they would be able to stack episodes from the season rather than only having the five most recent ones up and then having them go down after a few, after, well, yeah, five weeks. Unfortunately, they could not come to a deal with the CW, and the CW did not renew any contract with Hulu. Mm. So there will be no day after stream, uh, day after streaming, or really no any streaming of CW shows on Hulu this next season. Yep, come October. That's I'm, unfortunate, especially for those of us who don't have cable. I'm and, devastated because uh, I mean I. We have broadcast. I try to get broadcast TV, but CW never comes in in my town. Well, that the, was how I watched Flash and Arrow and let's, Legends. Let's, the three of us, like, okay, if you live in a city like Milwaukee, you live in a city like mm. Twin Cities, you live in, you know, a major metro area, you can just turn the CW on. Like, you could put it on TV whenever you want. When you live in towns like we do, Eau Claire, Janesville, Lafayette, Indiana, the CW is only available on cable, and if you don't have cable, you don't have the CW. And I, I don't have cable. I, I cord cut. I actually have a weird situation where I cannot even buy cable, and it has to do with... There's a long story, but all you have to know is that Hulu was the only legal way to get it onto my television that I had. And so, um, which was fine, because I had it. <laughs> mm-hmm. And right now, it's, um, like, right now, I think the only way, like, technically, CW shows are still going to be available next day on their website. Um, we're but gonna, that's watching things on a computer. Yeah, it would, like, yeah, it's, uh, technically, I think, now, for those of you who have Roku boxes and a computer in your house, technically, the Plex server can install an app that streams episodes from the CW's website onto your TV by relaying it through a computer. This, however, is done by effectively um, breaking... Like, it doesn't show the ads, so it cannot be legal. <laughs> like, it's got to be like... Mm. Well, it's legal in the sense that it's a publicly accessible HTTPS stream that my that the application has found a way to get to. Um, and it is reading it off of the legal stream that you know that the cw is distributing to the internet like it's not like but um it feels unethical <laughs> uh, this is just it it's it's a real bummer because like uh, especially i mean even personally a bunch of anime got pulled from hulu too due to some similar like well, deal problem so i'm having well the the anime stuff actually uh was a little more complicated the anime stuff was because I... the it um very few people were viewing 90 percent of the titles yeah i i i know i i wasn't going to get into too many yeah. specifics i was gonna cutting to the quick i'm i'm kind of losing a lot of the reasons i've subscribed to hulu though because yeah. i'm yeah no it's i watch eight shows i watch eight shows on the cw i watch well, this is including Supergirl, which is moving their next season. So, right. Supergirl, The Flash, Arrow, Legends of Tomorrow, just off the top of the bat. But I also watch iZombie, The 100, Jane the Virgin, and I'm sure I'm forgetting one. See, the other annoying thing, though, is like... Oh, yeah, Supernatural. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. See, like, even if if you if uh, someone was like, oh, well, just wait till they're on Netflix. Well, for that four part crossover, I am going to have to make sure I'm watching the four shows in the correct order so I can right. see that. And crossover they're premiering the on different order. weeks. Mm -hmm. Supergirl premieres the week after the Flash and Arrow, I think. I think so. But yeah, yeah pretty close to that. Yeah. yeah so uh, this is sublimely frustrating this is gonna be like when i watched um if if i wait for netflix it's gonna be like when i watched uh rewatched star trek and was alternating deep space nine and next gen episodes to watch them in airing order 
to get the couple of crossover episodes in the right order. I mean, yeah, but now I'm going to like nerd. But I mean, to, to watch the show correctly, I'm going to have to like pull up a wiki timeline or something. To... No, yeah, that's exactly what you, you're going to have to. Well, really, what you got to do is just have the three Wikipedia lists of just like air dates open. Mm hmm. It's going to be awful. So this is my job for you people on the internet. Just make us a single list for this next season. Because apparently the only, the only legal way we'll be watching the thing is to wait till the end of the seasons. Which I'm, you know, I'm not saying I could just illegally download it and watch it through Plex with two clicks. I no, you wouldn't say that. Especially not on air. Because that could but, get us in trouble with the implications of that. I'm not saying that. I would okay. do that. I'm not saying I would do that, but I am saying it is really tempting. There, there's an when, alternate universe out there where that is an acceptable way to do things. I'm saying, and in that alternative universe... I, I, will say, I will say this. I will say this. CW is co-managed by CBS. If they put the CW programming on CBS All Access, I would totally sign up for that service in five oh, that'd minutes. that'd be a great idea. Yeah, see, yeah, but then I would care about CBS All Access. Do it. Make that happen, if CBS. If they did that, I would sign up for that service in a moment. In fact, actually, that would be the smartest thing possible because, you know, it's like I'm going to have to sign up for really what my plan with CBS All Access was in the new Star Trek series is that I was going to wait till the end of the season because the episodes are going to come out once a week. I was going to wait till mm. the end of the season when they'd all aired, sign up for a month, watch all 13 episodes, and then cancel it the next month. Nothing wrong with that. That's probably what I'd do too. That's, that's my current plan. Because, yeah. That's... But if the CW See, shows moved there, I'm just saying. Then I, yeah, I would definitely have the motivation to want CBS All Access. Yeah. This is, it, it, again, it really sucks when you try to do things by the rules and they don't give you a good means of. Well, it's only frustrating because it's not available on any service. Right. Day after right now. That's the thing is it's not like they're switching service or if there's the rumor they were going to do their own service. Like, if any of that mm -hmm. had happened, it would be annoying, but I'd be like, okay, maybe I'm, you know, it's eight shows. Annoying, but deal with a bowl. It's eight shows. I would pay, you know, eight bucks a month for those shows. Mm -hmm. You know, if they rolled their own service. Like, it would be irritating, but I would do it. Um, I might cancel it over the summer if I was really broke, but, you know, but either way, like, I would, I would sign up all season and pay, you know, like, the eight bucks a month for those shows. But it's that it's not available on any service. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know about the CW's website, but I know the CW Seed website streaming is awful. Like, it's just janky and crashes a lot. When I watched the first season of Vixen on there, I had to restart that thing. I watched the compiled episode, and I had to... Re which is like a 45-minute episode while compiled. And I had to stop and restart it like eight times because it just would the app would crash mm -hmm. like i tried watching the um the the 1990 flash series on cwc because it's on there and it just stopped playing Ugh. like lame yeah so um it, that, that's that's what makes me worried is that I don't want to have to deal with their janky website and if they would just put their content on any of these services like I pay for Prime I pay for Netflix I pay for Hulu I, I'm feel like I'm I have Sling <laughs> like I am I am like all about cord cutting and paying for these services but if you don't if you don't let me pay for your content like because I'm not going to buy content. Like, I'm not going to, like, buy on iTunes. Because, for one, I can't put that on my Roku. But, two, um, I don't want to own the show forever. Mm. But I want to... I'll pay for a subscription and watch some ads for it. You know, let me give you my money, CW. You know? That, that same opinion, really. Ugh. Oh, CW, you with your superhero shows. I need some you good know, news, Nick. 
Well, actually, this is one of the few things that I would call legitimately good news. So, uh, speaking of the CW and our beloved superhero shows, um, a certain Man of Tomorrow has been rumored to be showing up in the second season of Supergirl. We were hearing the Man of Steel would be appearing in two episodes, and of course we speculated. I, I remember uh, even on this show talking about how great I would it would be for Tom Welling to come back. Well, I'm yeah. not getting Tom Welling. Nope. Sad day. But we have cast an actor, uh, Tyler Hecklin, um, American actor with a little bit of a former baseball career. <laughs> Um, has been cast as the uh, younger Superman, who will be appearing, uh, like I said, in those first two episodes of Supergirl. Um, what do you mean I younger? Have not, well, I mean uh, younger than uh, Henry Cavill's by a couple of years anyway. Well, right, but it's... Okay, so... Here's the thing. Um, you mean Henry Cavill? Cavill. Cavill. I've never heard anyone say Cavill. <laughs> you have not listened to me talk. He is a French. I, I, I only listen to he's, he's very British. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but, Mr. Cavill. But Ty- Please Tyler, don't hurt me with your giant biceps. Tyler Hicklin. <laughs> um, he's, he's I only think he 28. looks the part. He looks good. He's only 28, which means he's a little young because with the chronology of the series, he should be in his mid-30s. Um, just based on the math of how long Kara spent in the Phantom Zone and, and then how old she is now. He should be in this... Because like, he had to be an adult superhero when she was 12. Right? Mm-hmm. But um, right. but he could play older. It's I mean, he's 28. It's not like, you know, he's he can play five years, you know, five, six years older than what he is. That's not a problem. I, I, I wish... I can't say that I've seen anything that he's been <laughs> in. Why? But uh, like, as far as I mean, all I can so all I can really judge him on is uh, by his look. But you know, all the pictures I've seen of are him with a beard or some stubble. Shave the stubble, give him a spit curl, he'll look picture perfect. I'm sure that one of our listeners or viewers watched Teen Wolf. Like, oh yeah, I am 100 percent certain yeah. that one of you. So one of you guys watched Teen Wolf, and you tell us if he's good. Is he I've good? Seen, Please I've tell us. A, if... I've seen a couple episodes. He's not bad. I really he want him to be good. He was also in Seventh Heaven for a really long time. Ooh, really? Who'd he play? Um, where uh, is it? Just where second. Is it? At this point. Uh, t- he was play- he Martin, Martin Brewer. Brewer. Ah, I don't remember who that who is. Who's that? No which, idea. Which one of Decker and the Whale Lady's kids was he uh, dating? I'm not sure. I don't know, but he had a main role. It says main role, 62 episodes. Well, I made a reference that... to two Star Trek movies. It also it also should be pointed out that he played a couple of seasons for the Battle Creek Bombers uh, in Battle Creek, Michigan, which is the which is a team in the Northwoods League, which is great. And I go to Northwoods League games all the time. And I'm sad that I never saw him. I'm just happy to see Superman on a small screen. And yeah. the way that Jimmy has, or excuse me, the way that James Olsen has described Superman and the way Kara have described Superman, it sounds like it's the dorky Superman who I love. And I cannot wait to see dorky Superman interacting with his dorky yeah, cousin. But Tyler, Tyler Hecklin is so hot. And, and how are they going to dork him up? What are you talking about? They put glasses on him. You can yeah, be but... dorky and still be attractive. Yeah, no, it's that's the whole thing. Like Dean Kane was hot. He still played dorky Superman. <laughs> True. Right. But like But this is a different level of hot, Brand... you guys. This is Brandon like... Routh. Brandon like, Routh. Let me oil it, your it, muscles. Wonderful hot. puppy dog eyes was a delightfully dorky Superman. He's mastered dorky hot. Like he does that as the Adam too. If mm-hmm. you want to see him not be dorky, go watch him on Chuck. Um, or Scott Pilgrim. It, well, yeah, but um, Chuck, he's like actually playing a more serious character. Oh, okay. Versus Scott he Pilgrim, have any where vegan he's powers. Yeah, no. Vegan powers. Not that there's any reason that I've been rewatching Scott Pilgrim at okay, all. Okay, so I love that movie, but both Scott and Ramona Flowers are terrible people. In that. Well, movie. yeah. And so but... they totally deserve each other. 
<laughs> but they're both kind of awful. Don't worry, I'm sure we'll get into that. I love that movie, but they're both kind of awful in that movie. Yeah, they're not. I agree. It, it's a movie about none of the good people are the main focus of that movie. Well, and it's it's bef- like it's without any of the kind of emotional redemption the character has in the comics. So it's like... To be fair, the comics weren't finished yet when the movie was written. It is it is broken people getting together with broken people while breaking other people. I think Knives is the only one with a decent character journey, and her character journey is, I don't need this person. Which is good. That's just a good, like, that's just how some people grow. You I don't know. I Edgar Wright. I love him. Um, oh, visually, that movie is phenomenal. I love that movie. It's just they're awful people. Well, yeah, but like I said, don't worry. There's there's no good reason that I've been rewatching it. Just trust me on this. No Nick, reason. what cos what cosplay is coming out the? There's no. The it's not cosplay, but it is a project. You'll see. Okay. You'll all see. You'll all see. Um, swear to me. Anyway. Anyway, speaking me. of speaking of things that people are gonna see or or not see, um we uh we have a new theme for the new Ghostbusters movie. Uh Ghost of course uh the song uh the new Ghostbusters theme is by Fall Out Boy and it features Missy Elliott in a cameo cameo featured spot, I guess, is what we use for music. Uh and it's called I is it I ain't afraid. I well, it's it it's Ghostbusters. I'm not afraid. Ghostbusters. I'm not afraid. And um, oh, uh, I don't, guys. I okay, okay. I get it. I I understand. Fall Out Boy is like the big the big hit right now. Fall Fall Out Boy is like the big thing. And keep talking so we don't get copyright I just, flagged. I just can't stand like the follow-up with that like that really like repetitive stuttering freaking thing that goes on at the beginning like oh i uh, like they it. Do it they I do like it like it. all of their songs it's so awful and they do it all the time it is good it's it's, it's, it's great not, it's not the worst thing that could have happened but it's not the best they could have done i mean it's exactly it's, what i expected because uh, it's in the grand tradition of dubstep it is in the grand tradition of Ghostbusters films having theme songs based on whatever is popular at the time to use as a theme song for your mm-hmm. movie. And at the moment, it is, in fact, Fallout Boy. And I will say that Immortals, that the theme they wrote for Big Hero 6, is excellent. It is a great song. And I, I have think... not listened to the Ghostbusters song at all yet. I'm sorry. Well, it was on the background there for a little bit there. but like... Yeah, I, I know. That doesn't count. But let's remember Ghostbusters 2. <laughs> uh, are you kidding me? The rap break in Ghostbusters 2 is the greatest thing to ever happen in movie themes. This. No, it's oh, so boy. good. It's no, best. it's not. This is like, this, this is, is terrible. Movie. I'm just going to turn off ads guy. on this episode on YouTube. So just to, but... Yeah, that's, so next time someone wants to complain to me about Missy Elliott's rap or Fallout Boy being Fallout Boy, rap. I'm just going to say... I love Missy Elliott. I love Missy Elliott. I just, like, I don't know, like, pairing them up is really weird, and then it's just, it's dubstepy. It's so dubstepy, and I'm not, like, a fan of why we need that in everything. It's not dubstepy. I don't know if you know what dubstepy means. Like, I don't know what your definition of dubstepy is. Because I didn't hear the bass drop. I didn't hear the the types of see, I, yeah, yeah. Like I, I didn't hear what there, Nick though, just did. Present. There's there's dubstep influence in this theme song, and it bugs the shit out of me. There's Why can't not. we get the think, David Capito you, acapella dubstep? I think band we need to. Together. Someone needs to school you on what dub, what makes something dubstep. I think that's. I, I think that's I a whole can, other situation. I understand that you don't like the audio elements of the song, 
but you're as driving me nuts as referring it's not to done it as by that. garbage DJs. I'm okay with being. Honestly, musically, the song is all the parts of the Ghostbusters song that were written for the Ghostbusters song. It's the only thing missing from it is the bass line that Ray Parker Jr. ripped off of Huey Lewis's "I Want a New Drug." Which, so, by the way, I might need to. I kind of need to go listen to that uh, album tonight. I've got sports. Uh, anyway, oh, sorry, man, it's I been used to stuck in my head. I had sports on cassette tape as a little kid. I used to listen to that all the time on my Fisher Price it, tape got, player. I've got it on record, and when I bought it, like I got up, I, I got up, and I bought it, and I made the I made the go to Futurama reference, and the guy at the counter laughed because he's like, "Oh, I love Futurama." Everything else in here held up pretty well, yeah, except for sports by Huey Lewis on the news. I, you know, I owned that album. I love I've Huey had Lewis. multiple Huey Lewis albums news. over the years. I love Huey Lewis, man. Why do you hate good music, Fur? I don't. I'm just not super into the... Like, I just, I'm not super into the song, and I'm not like one of those people that's like, oh, well, this song is terrible, so the movie's going to be, like, it's not. The movie's going to well, yeah, be that's, fun. That's, I'm that's the other thing. The movie. That's the other thing, is that this, movie, like, this song's going to play a grand total of once in the frickin' movie, and it's going to play over the end credits, okay? So it's like, like, I don't understand why people are like, well, I was going to go see the movie, but then this happened. I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? It's like... Like the song or don't like the song, the fact is, is that it's barely going to be in there. It's the only reason anyone's talking about it is because the Ray Parker Jr. song, which, by the way, as a song, is just okay. The reason why we all love it, and I'll admit, I love that song, but we love it because of the nostalgia heartstring it pulls. It goes, oh, remember when you were five and you heard this for the first time? Like, that's why we like it. Nothing's going to be ever be as good as it was when you were five. Nothing. As, except for Voltron. Voltron's better than it was when I was five. Voltron's like the best thing right now. Yeah, but the original Voltron was better oh, when God, you were no. five. Oh, God, The original the, Voltron, the you go back to it and it's like... Well, it's I'm talking like about equivalent in things. The groin with a fist. I'm, I'm talking about equivalent things. Like something of equal value to the original feels yeah, but like the one you saw when you were five feels better. To the original Voltron would be an actual turd. Yeah, I said it. I had an amazing bowel movement this afternoon. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a lie. That is a lie. All right. Can it was we... actually this morning. Oh, dear God. Actually... Are we gonna... oh, can we move on to the next story? Okay, so the new Ghostbusters theme, I'm not a fan of it. Trey likes it. Nick hasn't heard it yet. Moving on. All right, so... Speaking of amazing bowel movements. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to thank Patrick Delahanty for tipping us off on this story of AnimeCons.com. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we, we a long time ago we mentioned that Wizard World was going to put a full convention on a cruise. And we don't mean like a geek a cruise. Boat. We don't mean a geek cruise like the Joko cruise or something like that. We mean like they wanted to do a full like vendor room, artist alley, full convention on a boat. And I believe that um, we described it as one of the most terrible ideas ever when we first talked. I think it was it was up there. It was up there. Was like why at our live at No Brand Con show. I think I would have to try to come up with some a worse idea than this, like. It's uh and and Wizard made a huge deal about this. Like we 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 first reported on it because we got the press release, you know, that they were hyping it up to us. And so uh of course, when they said the press release, I don't believe that they expected us to make fun of it. Um but we did. <laughs> and uh but Wizard World, uh, I don't know if you noticed had been making some bad financial decisions. And, you know, did this thing where they fired their CEO. I'm sorry, he resigned. But Definitely uh, was not fired. Don't know what you're talking about. And one of the things they said they were going to do was scale back their operations. And, smartly, one of the things they've decided to scale back on is they have quietly canceled the cruise. Yeah, well, I'm sure it's really affecting the one and a half people who signed up for it. Well, yeah, it's. I'm assuming no one... Well, they claimed, <laughs> they cited that they had problems with guests. 
uh, because they had, they did have a lot of guests canceled, but they had refilled the guest list. So it's it's clear that they could have gotten somebody to come. That's well, Steve Yoon gets seasick really easily. Okay, don't put him on a boat. I mean, we could have been on a boat with Ernie Hudson. Uh, he's got to go make Dragon Ball Evolution two or something, right? That's not a real thing. Or just play that Bobby Brown song on loop. I don't know. Anyways, so Wizard has come to their senses and they have canceled the cruise on a boat. So let us all mourn the fact that... Con on a boat. Boat con. Boat con is done. You know, it's... I'm... I was, I'm so disappointed because it was such a really terrible mourning? idea. I'm amused by it. No, I'm mourning that it got canceled because I wanted to know what the horrible stuff that happened there was going to be. Because you know oh, something man. was going to go wrong. Like half the it ship was going to be... It like, was going to be the Poseidon adventure with Ernie Hudson and Norman Reedus. No, Norman Reedus oh, had already man. pulled out. Uh, uh, darn it. But he's been canceling like half of his convention appearances. But... Uh, like after like Norman Reedus canceling on your convention is how you know you invited Norman Reedus in the first place um, <laughs> it, but like you know I wanted to hear about like the vendor room all getting norovirus and like <laughs> <laughs> toilets, toilets backing up and or Ernie Hudson fighting off Somali pirates <laughs> I mean, I'm just Why saying. Why would they be in Somalia? Somalia. Why would they go around that area anyway? I don't... I don't. I mean, I'll take both. I don't know. Just because it was leaving Miami doesn't mean I knew where it was going. It could be going anywhere. It could be going to Stoughton, Wisconsin, for all we know. That's definitely not possible. That's because you're not creative enough. Look, I don't care how big that Send to My Festival <laughs> is. They're not bringing in a cruise ship. <laughs> you need a lot more wonder in your life. Everything Trey. I know oh, about Stoughton, I know because he's lived Sean Orange, and that's where he went to high school. Oh, poor Sean. I mean, poor Sean. <laughs> the most Sean Orangey of all episodes that he's not on. If only you knew. I, I do know. I wrote the rundown. Oh. Right. I'm, I produce the show. I don't know. So Wizard World has canceled. <laughs> Boat Con. Boat Con. Hey, hold on. Hold on. Hold on, guys. Boat Con is officially sunk. Uh... That ex- I think that's what uh, uh, Patrick Delhanty used on his AnimeCons.com. Or, uh, dot com. His AnimeCounts.com article. I think. Oh, damn. The, okay, the, the cruise going on has the been. Anyway. The con has been scuttled. Um, oh. They couldn't see. keep it afloat. Uh, dear Lord. Yeah. You know, I will say, though, like, I gotta say, I. I. You know, when we first was announced, I got to use my favorite headline ever that I've ever written, though. Which is having run out of cities, Wizard World puts convention on a boat. <laughs> that was a good headline. That was a, I remember it's a good headline. And now it won't ever happen again. Never came to fruition. It's okay, Trey. It's okay. <sighs> Life Things is will be sad. Up. If if you know of other bad plays, you know. So, but we I think actually we need to open this up to suggestions. We need to know where Wizard World should try to launch its next convention that it then cancels. Are they going to try to run one at um, McMurdo and Antarctica? Should they try... Come on, National Space Station! Should they try to launch R- Wizard World Rio? <laughs> and, uh... Wizard World Chernobyl. Pripyat. Oh, yeah, yeah, Wizard World Pripyat. Uh... Or, uh, you know, uh, Wizard World, the moon. Send Ernie Hudson to the moon. On the moon, we carry a harpoon. Oh. I just assume, I just assume. Wizard World, by the end of the century, by the end of the decade, we will put a convention on Mars. <laughs> I, you know, and, and you know, Ernie Hudson, I just always assume Ernie Hudson's at any Wizard World convention. <laughs> at this point, I've yet. 
I've yet to see photos uh, of of a of Wizard World convention Wizard without World. Ernie Hudson oh, yeah. in them. So he's in literally every Wizard World photo ever ever taken. He's just he's in the background. <laughs> you just have to look ball. hard enough. It's like where's Waldo? It's you know, <laughs> <laughs> find Ernie Hudson. <laughs> the other really? half, of the, and and then and then about seventy five percent of those also have Jason David Frank. Oh yeah, of course. Yeah. And 50% of those have Adam Pulver working with Jason David Frank. <laughs> <laughs> or working on him. He's a robot. Oh, what? 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 Hold on. Where did this, what, this went from, like, dirty to sci-fi-ish. <laughs> I don't understand. So confused. God, we got mail. We've got mailbag, don't we? Man's we a do? father. I can't. We do indeed. Nick, do you want to reach into that mailbag and pull something out? Let's. What have I? What have I got in the mailbag? Just let me pull out a. What does letter. Nick have in the mail? Nick so is sorry. reading our mail. All Holy right. Crap, so he's got the is... mail. I'm gonna keep singing over Nick. Okay. Okay. So, it's Nick of and Sean he's got mail. Knock it off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, singing of Sean Orange. Our big old letter in uh, this fortnight's mailbag is from Sean Orange. Of FamcomDojo.tv. Heck yeah. And a guest at uh, this year's Nerd and Tie Expo. Pretty great dude, all in all. And uh, his subject is Sasha Baron Cohening. Hello, nerds and or ties. I don't share your apprehension of Sasha Baron Cohen not playing a role seriously enough. I can't believe you didn't mention his turn as that innkeeper slash pimp from the most recent okay. film. Of Les Miserables. Okay, now hold on a second. Okay, as the re- resident musical actor here, okay, Sean, you you tend to like you tend to block out a role. Like there are so many roles of actors that you forget that they've done because Wait. they're so like anything else they've done. Okay, okay. So what do you mean resident? I have, I have. I'm in one currently. Okay, I know, I'm but in one currently. I have a history. That's fine. Okay, we've <laughs> all we've all been in theater. Okay. Yes. And. And I don't know where I was going with that, but you tend to forget that uh, about somebody's role if it's been so wildly different from their other roles. Because what have we only ever seen Sasha Baron Cohen play? We've only ever seen him play these like way out there caricatures of people that you forget that he was in something where he wasn't running around the country with a camera fooling people into, into thinking that he's something that he wasn't. I actually didn't forget. I just didn't see. Th- okay, so I'm obsessed with Les Mis because I was I a theater nerd. I tried to 90s. forget Russell Crowe's performance in that movie. Yeah, no, and it's it made mostly I hated Russell Crowe's Crow. voice so much from what I saw <laughs> in pre clips that I refused to go see the movie because I love Les Mis too much. I have the uh, original Broadway cast in my um, room. I've listened to the original London cast, and it's mostly the same people with a few differences. I don't like the version of stars on the original London recording. I like the version that they the the show eventually stuck with on the Broadway cast. So, like, let me say, I have firm opinions on Les Mis. So, I didn't see the movie because I wasn't going to enjoy it. Who was he? Who did he play in, in Les Mis? Was it, so uh, he was he was the, he was the innkeeper. Oh, the oh, well, yeah, of course he was good in that. That's a com- that's the comedic slapstick role. He's the comic relief. I mean, he's the creepy ass comic relief. He's an awful huge character. I mean, like he's. The character is an awful person that's part of the character. But, yeah, of course he'd be good at that. It's a comedic part. Uh, he notes the version with the extreme close-up so you could see the actress pores and Anne Hathaway doing 50 takes of one songs, sometimes inside a coffin. Anyway, he played it well. Any goofiness, I assume, uh, is what the director wanted. Which, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, comedy. that's the part. That's the part. In fact, it was so memorable. I still, uh, my wife and I still quoted to each other. I saved you. Now I haven't seen any uh, other film or stage versions of the of the Les Mis musical, so I can't say how Cohen's portrayal compares to that of others. But, uh, but uh, to sate my curiosity, I did soon after find a version starring uh, Gerard Depardieu. The version that was, the, yeah. No. That was apparently based directly off the novel. Claire Danes not only is in was that. there, not only was there no singing, but, uh, uh, 
I, I'm sorry. I'm Thun and Deer. Thun and Deer was uh, played uh, uh, was uh, played as a larger douche cannon than Javert could ever hope to be. What I'm saying is that I am super excited to see Sasha Baron Cohen in anything not of his making. Since I heard uh, 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 that Freddie Mercury biopic will uh, proceed without him. Such a waste. Sean Orange. P.S. Uh, Gary Chalk absolutely has, uh, has the physicality to play a silverback gorilla on screen. Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. <laughs> it, it's, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I have to correct you. That's pronounced Buddha, Buddha, Buddha. <laughs> Excuse me. That is a reference to Transformers fanfic that Sean and I co-authored in the early 2000s. I'm sorry that I haven't read your Transformers. <laughs> yeah, wow, how did you do, how did you not, Nick? You're a Transformers fan. I thought that's required reading at this point. I The world is a how, strange place. How come you've not read every single Transformers fan fiction ever? And, okay, Nick? so let's, I don't let's... know the the RID cartoon seemed to reference one of my dumb YouTube videos, so that's enough for me right now. All right, now. so uh you know, a guy we, Sean and I used to post on, like, the same boards as, um, like, on the same Transformers board is now, like, one of the, like, is he at the DC Comics now? He He's, like, actually a major higher up in, like, with some of DC's uh, enter- television stuff. Crazy. Um, and, yeah, uh, he worked at Fox Kids at the time that we were talking with him. Um, so it's not, like, surprising. Also crazy. Yeah, no, it's weird. So, wait, was that when Beast Machines was on Fox Kids? Or yeah. was that? Oh, crazy! Yeah, we yeah. I need to rewatch Beast Machines, and then you can read Beast Machines: The Lost Episodes, the sh- by Sean Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> or don't, no, don't, don't. It's so terrible. Okay, but anyway, see, he's referring to Shasha Baron Corn's casting as Mandrake the Magician that we talked about on the last mm-hmm. episode. Um, you know, it's it. The master of magic, spells, and illusions, if you will. What it what it comes down <laughs> they to... They demand to be taken seriously. What it comes down to is I was apprehensive about his casting. Sean's a little more confident. Uh, we talked about Leila Miserab a lot there, but it's partially because, Sean, I've seen... I've I've heard many versions of Leila Miz, like, a lot. And, yeah, no, it's... Uh, I, I haven't watched the movie version that he's in, but it sounds like you're describing the exact, the only character I would have ever cast him in, in Les Mis. The Key and Peele version is the best version, if you ask me. Check it out, it's really funny. I will <laughs> <you> have to. <laughs> I have to now. Key and it's it's amazing. Oh, man. It's, it's one of their best, it, it was actually, that was the sketch that someone showed me that made that made me watch the rest of their show. Because it's one of the best sketches I've ever seen about musical theater. All right, so we need to move on to the Vomit Hat Steve Challenge. Indeed we do. All right, now it is time to move to the Vomit Hat Steve Challenge. The Vomit Hat Steve Challenge is the final part of the episode where every episode I read a portion of a book. And the challenge to you, the listener or viewer, is to guess what book I'm randomly reading sentences from. Nick, no one can see you. Um, <laughs> Too bad. Let them know that I'm pointing at them with the finger of doom. If you are able to guess what book I've been reading from, you get included in the Hall of Awesome. The benefits of the Hall of Awesome are as follows. One, you get your name listed on the website. Two, you get your name read aloud every episode. And three, uh, I'll give you a high five if we're ever in the same room and you want one. That's That's it. We're on a budget. The current members of the Hall of Awesome are as follows. Arkham I Zero, Ren Innocenti, Cheesy McDamu, Chrysalis, Slithery D, Shameless Otaku, The Random Ramblings, Man, Corfan, Capito, Chris Graham, Lilisaurus, Paper Godzilla, Cavsy, and the Minnesota Librarians. Now, Times for la- three. Now, for the <laughs> last several episodes, I've been reading from the same book, and I'm going to continue to do that now. I'm beginning to think the Minnesota Librarians are just taking this one off. No, I've been really obtuse. That hasn't stopped them in the past. Nah, it, it delayed them for a while. And I'm trying to find a good one. No, that's... See, the problem is I try to find ones that won't immediately give it away. 
That's a quote from someone else's book in the book, so I don't think that would be, that would be cheating. <laughs> By challenging the foreign, shame, the foreign shame of the hula, he popularized and therefore politicized it. If you know what book that's from, go to nerdandtie.com slash contact and tell us. Or just click on the contact form at nerdandtie.com. And, or if you'd like to write to us about anything else, go there, do that. Be the things, do the things. Tell us the things. Tell us why Fur's hair looks very interesting today. Or he why was wearing a hat at, yeah. Or why Nick looks kicking in those jeans. Go ahead. Let us know. Be the knowledge. Undo the knowledge while redoing the past and telling us about your future self in the moment that you are now and yet have never been. <clears throat> Something well like said. that. And as always, you can subscribe to us on iTunes and Stitcher and on the Google Play Store as well. Rate, review us there. Let us know how much you like us. Tell us Subscribe how to much... us on YouTube. Yeah, do that too. And leave comments about Trey's bandana and how we need to get him a brightly colored one because it's very dark and he needs fluorescent green on his head. As no, always, for Nerd and Ty, I am Professor Firsters. I'm Trey Dorn. And I'm Nick Izumi. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you next week for the off week and in another fortnight for Nerd and Ty. Sorry, I missed Keep the off week last talking. weekend. Keep on sparking in the free world. Dance party. Take it home.